Welcome to Iron Fallsboro. This episode comes to you uh, taping in the lobby of the historic Hill Studio here on Broad Street in Fallsboro. Um, without Irma today, so it's a little bit of an empty set. It's myself and Fred, and uh, that's it. But we have an interesting program, and uh, we didn't want to wait too long. Irma's in Florida. The good people of Florida experiencing uh, Irma and uh, her energy. We're looking forward to her getting back and getting back soon. So uh, from a community note standpoint, we're going to have to make some of that stuff up as we go. Uh, interesting program, as I mentioned. We're going to be joined by a spokesperson for the refinery to talk about the recent oil spill and how things are progressing, getting all that put back together, and some of the details associated with it. Uh, hopefully you'll find that of interest. Uh, also, we're going to highlight the uh, gala that's coming up for the celebration of the Boys and Girls Club 10th anniversary. It's going to be a big deal, and that's a, quite an accomplishment, a decade of service uh, to these young people making a difference uh, in their lives. And also, we're going to interview the uh, coach of the Paulsboro High School boys basketball team, which has finished an undefeated season in the Colonial Conference, heading into the playoffs with a lot of optimism, and uh, looking forward to that interview as well. So stay with us. We're coming right back from Hill Studio on Broad Street. Life is a journey that we travel with a lot of uncertainty. When your family is faced with change and you're in need of understanding, direction, honesty, and professionalism, we at the Landoffy Funeral Home have a tradition of assisting you with all of your needs in any way that we can. We offer many affordable funeral services. Please feel free to call us with any questions you may have or visit us at www.landoffyfuneralhome.com. Rizzo Family Chiropractic Center in Gibbstown offers pain relief with a difference. Using specific chiropractic adjustments, Rizzo Family Chiropractic will get to the root of your problem quickly. Bring your headaches, neck, back, joint, or limb pain to Dr. Karen Rizzo. If you have recurring pain, chiropractic can help. Rizzo Family Chiropractic can relieve many sources of pain without extended treatment and ongoing therapy. Give your family the gift of caring professional pain relief with a difference. Rizzo Family Chiropractic. Uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, from time to time, uh, we take advantage of having this access and doing this cable television program to bring information of issues that uh, happen in a timely fashion. And uh, this is one of them. Uh, recently, there was uh, an unexpected uh, oil spill that occurred within the uh, confines of the uh, refinery uh, that was contained, but yet the odors got away, and uh, it, was, uh, it was pretty significant during the period that it happened. Now, for the old timers, they would say, uh, well, you should smell like that more often. Uh, but in recent years, as air quality standards have changed and investments have been made in equipment uh, to keep those smells away, uh, we've grown used to not having to smell that. So it was quite a day. With us now is Mike. Mike, your last name? I'm sorry. Mike Karlovich. See, he told me that three times, and it just, like, just could not retain that. Mike is spokesperson for the refinery, has a long history in the refining industry, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But, Mike, what, like, we should pick it up at the beginning. First of all, this company is now called Paulsbury Refining Company. Uh, the O'Malley brothers uh, came in, purchased it from Valero, and kept it operating, which was a very important to all of us because of the jobs associated with it and the products that are refined there. You know, we've seen the closings of the refineries in Pennsylvania and neighboring West Effort, and uh, it's very difficult stuff. Uh, but this company is, is not an old company, but you have, this company has very deep roots in operating refineries. Yes, we do. Uh, thank you, John, uh, first of all, for the opportunity to uh, talk about the refinery. Uh, but first, I really would like to uh, cut to the chase and apologize on behalf of my coworkers at the refinery for, uh, for this incident, for the uh, for the odors in the community, and just for the general inconvenience, uh, you know, we take refining very seriously. It really is manufacturing. You know, this is base manufacturing. We turn a product crude oil into products that people use every day. But but that's what we want to do. So we know we let the people down here, the residents, our neighbors down, and uh, we let ourselves down because we have high standards. We want to work safely, run reliably, and operate in a uh, an environmentally responsible manner. And so when something like this happens, you know, it's, uh, we have to turn our focus to that instead of routine operations. So, uh, you know, we have, we, we train, we do drills, we do a lot to be prepared in case uh, an incident like this occurs. And, uh, and that goes all the way through our operators. We have emergency responders, you know, some of them are actually, you know, uh, in their home communities or uh, on the fire squad, the fire rescue squads. So uh, the emergency response is, 
is part of our of our overall activities, although we'd rather be uh, operating routinely. Well, but those responses are part of the routine because uh, the refining business uh, is 24-7. Uh, it's a sophisticated process. And in this case, uh, this oil leak sort of comes from an unexpected place. You have a lot of piping underground. You have a lot of operations taking place above ground. But for a storage tank to, uh, to not correctly do what it's supposed to do is unusual. So give us an overview of what happened, Mike. We're, yeah, we're in the very early stages of uh, the investigation. In fact, really, our whole focus so far has been on the response and in, uh, in cleaning up the, uh, the area. So if we could just step back a second. So we, we had a tank. It had been uh, filled with crude that day uh, from a tanker. And, uh, and it appears as though, and again, this is very preliminary, that uh, a, a, a split occurred in the bottom of the tank where the floor and the wall meet. Uh, now, that might change a little bit. Again, you know, I'm sharing a little preliminary information. But it, the, uh, so the, uh, we, we saw... We, Somebody identified the leak right away, and so we had a very rapid response, as I mentioned, because we're you know we're geared, we're trained to respond. So, uh, in, in addition to a command center that we set up at the refinery, we contacted local, county, state, federal officials, and agencies. They you know represented some those uh, groups came in, and. Uh, and we we staged uh, fire trucks. You know there were no injuries. There's no fires. You know, but there was the uh, crude. So we were able to pump a lot of the crude into another storage tank. Uh, but the crude did get out through the uh, the split into a containment area, which is designed to hold more liquid than the uh, than you would have in the tank. So we would we pumped out. The, the oil in the tank, but some went into the containment area, which all worked the way it's supposed to, the way it's designed and engineered to. And we, we lowered uh, two submersible pumps into the, uh, into the oil, uh, linked it into some piping and into another tank. So we're, we have been recovering that uh, oil. Now, to, uh, to try and, and to, well, to suppress the odors, we would put foam on top of it, just like regular firefighter foam. If, if, you know, the folks watching have seen that. So you put foam on as a blanket. The, uh, the challenge we had was the rain on Thursday into Friday and the, then the high winds Friday and Saturday, uh, which was moving the foam around. We kept spraying it on, and that's part of uh, the reason there were odors. Um, so we were pumping it out, putting the foam on top, and, you know, our goal is to... Uh, you know, well, we've just about recovered everything from the containment area now, uh, right? What, as of this morning, there's some pools left in it, and we'll go in and we'll uh, pump those out as well. And then we have a plan to remediate or to clean up the whole area of the, you know, where it was contained. A, a couple points, and uh, to give people a sense of this, uh, that, that holding tank uh, is considered young by industry standards. They are required to be inspected on a 20-year basis, correct, Mike? 20-year basis. So this tank was due in the next four years. Uh, and sitting in the briefings with both the Lieutenant Governor and the Commission of the DEP, uh, Bob Martin, who toured the site on Friday, as the information was discussed back and forth, numbers were exchanged that give you a sense of what's taking place in this world at the moment. Uh, the value of the product in that tank was approaching $35 million on the crude on the crude value just alone. And by the way, Mike brought a sample. Uh, I opened it, but I wasn't supposed to. Uh, this is it here, correct, Mike? This, yes, this is Arab light. It is from Saudi Arabia. And it, as you can see, it's, it's a light oil because the... Uh, if, if I tip it a little bit, you could see it moving, and then there's a little film left over, but it's very light. There's other types of crude that we can run that if it was in this bottle, you could just turn the bottle upside down, it would just stay there, uh, like, sort of like molasses. The, the Arabian light crude, now when you say light, you say, well, what does that mean? But it's because of the viscosity is on the light side, correct? That's correct. Uh, you just, it's hard to believe that something so expensive could smell so bad. Uh, I don't know how else to say it, but can you imagine that? Uh, so there are, how many, how many gallons in a barrel? There's 40. 42 gallons in a barrel. $120 plus for that, and it smelled as bad as it did. So fragrance is not part of what the Arabs are selling us. Um, on the good side, though, uh, the incidents that can occur associated with this process, this seemed, uh, and I'm not attempting to gloss over anything, but it seemed like, as described to us, the, uh, the, the build-up dike area held correctly, so uh, there was no intrusion to uh, the river. And uh, as you pour the fire foam on, 
the water, the oil, of course, floats on water, actually creates an additional barrier. Uh, th that's correct. The, uh, but again, there was the wind, and the wind was, was blowing it around, and, and that was part of the reason for the odors. Um, Sunday, when the winds calmed down, it was a lot better. Um, but, you know, the, the, you know, our goal is, was, was and is to get it all cleaned up and, and to stop that and, and get back to routine operations. We'll be right back. I pledge to be there for you when disaster strikes, to guide you through your claim, to offer personalized coverage from a choice of insurance companies, to explain your policy and treat you with respect. That's the Trusted Choice Pledge. We put it in writing. Home, auto, business, life. We are Trusted Choice, independent insurance agents in your hometown. Spartan Planning, your local Trusted Choice agency. Call 423-4561. For everything, there's a season, and a time for everything under heaven. A time for sharing, a time for caring, a time for remembering, and a time for parting. When that time arrives, let Alan C. McBride, Beth McBride Foley, and Thomas D. Foley at the McBride Foley Funeral Home help you in your time of need. Offering a wide variety of funeral services from cremation to traditional, McBride Foley Funeral Home has been helping families with the loss of a loved one with over 50 years of combined service. McBride Foley Funeral Home, 228 West Broad Street, Paulsboro. Thinking about a new appliance or an LCD TV? Don't think twice, think Weiss. Weiss True Value has a full line of LCD TVs plus a great variety of appliances. And of course, hardware items like True Test Paints, Master Mechanic Tools, Electrical Supplies, Key Duplicating, and Rug Doctor Rentals. And for repairs on screens and windows, look no further. Weiss True Value, from making keys to selling appliances and LCD TVs. Don't think twice, think Weiss. 39 West Broad Street, Paulsboro. It seems you're a little bit ahead of schedule uh, on the cleanup side, which is good news. Um, so uh, from this point on, you, you know, I guess it's, it's mop-up time. Uh, that's correct. Although we take this, you know, even though we've gotten the bulk of it out, we, we're taking this very seriously as well. And we have a plan in place. We've reviewed the plan with those agencies I mentioned earlier. Um, and, and we'll just proceed methodically to get the rest of the oil up and then clean up the area. And then, as I mentioned, we'll, uh, we'll actually recycle and, uh, you know, get the foam, get the water, any dirt that may have gotten entrained in the, or, you know, caught up in the uh, oil. And we'll be able to run that oil and turn into product. And Mike, you've been around the refining business a long time, as I mentioned in the intro. Although this is new ownership, they have very deep roots in the refining business. Uh, a tank failure, uh, I talk to old timers again, that's not something that seems to happen with any kind of frequency. Uh, th this is very rare, and uh, you know, but we were we were ready for it. We were we were trained, and uh, you know, again, you know, we're an engineering company, right? So so everything that you look at is engineer. The tank is is on a, an inspection cycle. We will do the you know. Once we can get in there and we get the rest of the, what we call the heel, the bottom out, you know, we'll get in there, we'll inspect it, we'll do an investigation, uh, and we'll bring that uh, tank up to current standards. The, but when you, when you, it's just like a house. You know, there's an inspection, there's a code. Well, there's a code that we follow, and, and that is up to code. Um, and it was, you know, to be due in four years, but we're going to do the in, entire inspection and update now. Uh, we're not going to wait the four years. Well, we've come through another experience uh, associated with uh, what happens when something unexpected happens. And the bad side of it is something happened. Uh, in my opinion, the good side is that those professionally trained people reacted accordingly and uh, no injury, uh, a lot of inconvenience for many people at a great distance, by the way. And, and Mike, another point we didn't touch on uh, that was uh, brought about in the, uh, the, um, the update meeting that we had on Friday was the uh, amount of air monitors that were placed in strategic places as this event started to unfold. Yes, in, in fact, I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you. The one of the, again, going back to the engineering and the science, is that uh, we immediately put folks out into the refinery and the community to take air samples. Uh, later on, that was taken over, that air monitoring was taken over by a third party under uh, a government agency's authority. And, uh, and they continued it uh, up through yesterday. And, uh, and you know, what the air monitor showed throughout, and it's a little bit difficult to explain, but the, the levels were very, very low. Now we can go to parts per billion, and, uh, and the crude that we were looking at in that sample does have 
a very low odor threshold, so you could smell it in just a very small amount. But but the uh, as the commissioner mentioned when you were there and when we, we did that interview, you know that that uh, there could be some irritation for some folks, but generally it's the odor. You know, the, and uh, according to the commissioner uh, and and the DEP, that you know the health impacts are minimal unless uh, you know you you get a heavy exposure or you're a little sensitive to it. Well, it's also, uh, it sort of threw lunch off a little bit, but it was after lunch, it was two o'clock, so uh, everybody got through it. And uh, for those who experienced it, it wasn't pleasant. Uh, you've heard an explanation as to how it occurred and uh, a clear explanation as to the steps that were taking once it was understood what was taking place. I wouldn't want to have, I wouldn't have been the person who drew the short, short straw that had to call one of the owners of the company and say, by the way, we've got 35 million gallons worth of product that's uh, leaking as it should, and that couldn't have been a pleasant call. Well, John, you know, uh we're all trained to uh, respond, and that's part of our response. But you know, ultimately, yeah, we, we we did have a complete and thorough response. But in the end, we did impact the community. We're sorry for that. Um, you know, we apologize to the, to our neighbors, to the residents here in Paulsboro and the surrounding communities. Um, you know, and, and we're going to go in and we're going to fix that tank. Very good. I think that sort of sums it up. Not much more to say. Uh, the work continues. The jobs are ongoing, and. Uh, on we go. Uh, we'll be right back after this word. Stay with us. The program will continue from the lobby here at Hill Studio. Life is a journey that we travel with a lot of uncertainty. When your family is faced with change and you're in need of understanding, direction, honesty, and professionalism, we at the Landoffy Funeral Home have a tradition of assisting you with all of your needs in any way that we can. We offer many affordable funeral services. Please feel free to call us with any questions you may have or visit us at www.LandoffiFuneralHome.com. Rizzo Family Chiropractic Center in Gibstown offers pain relief with a difference. Using specific chiropractic adjustments, Rizzo Family Chiropractic will get to the root of your problem quickly. Bring your headaches, neck, back, joint, or limb pain to Dr. Karen Rizzo. If you have recurring pain, chiropractic can help. Rizzo Family Chiropractic can relieve many sources of pain without extended treatment and ongoing therapy. Give your family the gift of caring professional pain relief with a difference. Rizzo Family Chiropractic. Welcome back to Iron Paulsboro. Uh, big event coming up, uh, and a nice event coming up. The Boys and Girls Club of Gloucester County, which started in Paulsboro at the old St. Anthony's Hall, celebrating its 10th anniversary. Uh, a series of events are planned. It started with a kickoff of cake and coffee, which was actually a lovely afternoon as the leadership uh, unveiled what their events were going to be for the coming year, particularly for fundraising, because it takes a great deal of generosity to keep these operations going, and so much good is done. Uh, Judge DeSimone was there. He was part of the original board, as were many others. Uh, Judy McKenzie, uh, Bob Broughton joins us, who at the time was acting executive director, uh, to reflect on what it was 10 years ago. And uh, I might add that uh, Judge DeSimone's wife was there, Mrs. DeSimone, who handled a hammer in the early demolition days uh, when it was hands-on. Uh, before the operation came to life. A lot of people are to be thanked. And uh, it's going, one of the highlights of the 10th anniversary celebration is going to be a gala at Hill Studio on the 10th. And we wanted to get this segment in advance of that, where Tony Atisi is going to return back to Paul's Bar uh, to give a concert that evening, along with a dinner buffet. And, uh, and I suspect there'll be a spirit or two uh, for those who choose to enjoy that as well. Uh, but we're going to start in this segment. We're going to visit with Tony. We're going to start with uh, Robert Taylor who is the new executive director of the Boys and Girls Club of Gloucester County, which now includes Paulsbar and Glassbar. And uh, that's been an easy marriage and one that's benefited everyone. But first of all, Robert, welcome to Gloucester County because you come from the other end of the state. Well, thanks, John. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to a, a great time here in Gloucester that we have a, a lot of opportunities to do nice things for kids. We got thrown right into this. So you come in the 10th anniversary, you're redoing the basement to turn it into a teen center. That's at the Paulsbar Club. There's talk of uh, opening a Woodbury branch. You've got a big job. Yes. Well, we, there's a lot of opportunity to do stuff for kids. And here in Paulsboro, being here for 10 years, we're really excited about that. The teen center should open in September. Uh, the teen center will probably add about 4,000 square feet. We'll be able to serve another 75 kids every day after school because of that space. And you're serving how many now? We're serving uh, 75 kids uh, after school every day, and we have in both sites, and, and we're looking forward to opening the teen center. I think it's, uh, it's an important thing. The kids come after school, a disciplined setting for homework, 
very well structured, computers available, then a meal is served, and these give, give kids a safe place to be after school. Uh, it's got to be a, a good, positive experience. It's, it's a great experience, and I'm lucky enough to be working in Boys and Girls Clubs for the past 26 years and really happy to be here in Gloucester. You're surrounded with good people. Jim D'Aloisio, uh, the group uh, collectively, uh, it's an impressive group. The board of directors is one of the reasons why I came here. I was so uh, happy to see so many dedicated people come on a board and work towards doing stuff for kids. But this takes a lot of money, folks, and that's why the event we're now going to talk about is so important. This is one of the key fundraisers of the year, and this goes to a good cause. Uh, so you have, to, you have to manage programs. You've got the National Boys and Girls Club affiliate, and then you've got to figure out how to raise money. Well, sure, and figuring out how to raise money is one of the difficult tasks, but we think we do good work, and p people want to help people. So uh, this event is an opportunity to help, and uh, we're looking forward to thanking those people who really – helped us start and uh, help the founders or, or um, thank the founders uh, of the Paulsboro unit and, uh, and do more work. Well, it's going to be a great evening. And uh, it's going to be a special evening. We're going to invite Tony Tisi. Bob, stay with us, too. Tony Tisi is going to walk in. Now, many of you know her, of course. Her family has great history here. Her brother is a prominent physician uh, based out of Woodbury and Jefferson Hospital. Her father served as a community doctor at a time when you know doctors carried a black bag, and they came to the house, and uh, they touched you, and they gave you a pill, and they left. And uh, now, of course, you know, you have to get an MRI and a CAT scan and a PET scan and, and you have to diagnostic. And then eventually the doctor sees you and they touch you and they give you a prescription and you go get the pill and then you leave. Tony, th th thank you for being with us. You've been so kind. You've given your time. You've Fourth of July parade on two occasions. Uh, and now you're going to spend an evening here. Uh, this is your second appearance at Hill Studio because you did the anniversary celebration for St. John's Church. Yes, I did. It was, I think it was the 75th. I'm not sure I, exactly I what year it was. It was a memorable evening. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, it was wonderful. When I came down to see the space first and then when I came in to perform, it was like night and day, which is what you do here all the time. Well, <laughs> all we hope that's the case here because I'm Virginia McKenzie is going to jump in and talk to us about yeah. some of the particulars. Uh, but tell us about the program for the evening. What will people expect? Have you, have you selected uh, uh, the itinerary, what you'll present? Yes, we have. It's as Broadway comes to Broad Street, which was so appropriately named. And we'll be opening with some shows from uh, Stop the World, I Want to Get Off, and The Roar of the Grease Paint, and The Smell of Crowds. We'll be singing music of Irving Berlin, Jerome Kern, Cole Porter, George Gershwin, uh, something from Phantom of the Opera, a lovely segment from Phantom of the Opera, and uh, lots of Sound of Music. So it's, it'll actually be the music pretty much based on what was going on in Broadway in those days, years and years ago, that we've all heard and yeah. loved. And that work is hard. That, that, that music has stayed so fresh for so long. Well, it's amazing. Broadway was started, you know, the immigrants that came to this country, they were the ones that really gave us Broadway. When they talk about Tin Pan Alley, they really, it's where they were all working to put this. And the music has absolutely, it's ageless. I mean, it goes on from generation to generation, and people just love it. And I love singing the Broadway because you can, it almost feels like you're taking your audience down memory lane. And I think they just have a very long, um, long life of enjoyment for the audiences. I, I think it's been a gift, as you have been a gift, I might say. Uh, people look forward to seeing you, and this is an opportunity to see Tonya. She's performed in New York and in Philadelphia on a regular basis on the big stages, as well as summertime down at the shore, and gives us her time to join us here for this great event. But I want to say one thing, and it was in the Hill Theater when I came as a little girl to see the movies every Saturday, and I saw... So Deanna Durbin, Jane Powell, Shirley Temple, and I would leave this theater at the little age of probably 10, 11, or 12, dance down Delaware Street to my house, but this is where I got and found my dream. This is where I decided I wanted to do what they were doing on that stage. You've never told me that before. <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt, but I thought it would be no, kind no, of interesting. No, it's the truth, story. though. It is the absolute and total truth. Absolutely. I saw them, and then I would dance down Delaware Street, but I couldn't understand why I didn't have, like, 96 musicians behind me like they did. Well, I, I think you should reenact the dancing down Delaware Street after you. <laughs> we'll save it for another time. <laughs> There are magic in these walls, I've said that often. My father and mother had their first date here. Uh, there are great stories within the walls of this building, uh, reinvented to be a studio, and uh, we've had wonderful memories as well. Tony, we're looking forward to the tent. Thank it's going to be a lot of fun. Judy, why don't you step in? Judy McKenzie is one of the, the drivers of the, when this, all this was put together, meeting Boys and Girls Club. Bob, stay in the picture too. So Judy, give us an overview of the evening, because uh, seating is going to be limited, by the way. The building's only so big. 
Well, we're all looking forward to it. It's going to be a great event. A little something for everybody. It'll start with um, a little celebrating early. Uh, we have the Barley Legal, that's not a mistake, Barley Legal Home Brewers, uh, our beer makers uh, that will have a variety of beers of uh, 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 selection on tap. We also have local wine makers doing wine for us. So there will be wine and beer. Uh, and Brad Cook of uh, Telford Inn, JG Cooks, and uh, Carolina Blue is doing the menu for us. He's doing the food. Uh, and uh, some other local people are contributing as well. So we're going to have great food, some good drink, and wonderful performance. And here in the Hill, and it's, it's rare these days, kind of when you first opened, we had a number of events here. Not many in these past couple of years. So what a great venue to have an event like this. Times, at uh, times, tickets availability, how do people get tickets? Uh, tickets you can get by going to the Boys and Girls Club website. I'm going to cheat and look. It's www.gc. BGC, so Gloucester County Boys and Girls, Boys and Boys Girls Club, I think, dot org, dot org uh, or by calling, and you can search all that on the internet and you'll find. So you can call for tickets or go to the website to order tickets. It's uh, $50 a person. Uh, and that includes all the things that we talked about. And that money, because we're having so many generous donations, all those things I just told you about are being uh, pretty much donated in full. So we're trying to keep the expenses down. Ms. Tizia is being so kind, donating her performance. We're trying to keep the expenses down because this is a fundraiser for the kids right here in this community. And a phone number for people interested in tickets that don't have the internet. Good point. You can also get tickets by calling 881-6084. Uh, and uh, you can order your tickets that way, and they'll be, they'll be held for you. Or contact me. You pretty much know where to find me. Uh, we're not certain there'll be tickets at the door because seating is limited. Uh, as Judy mentioned, we don't often use the studio this way these days because of the studio schedule, but this was significant, and uh, those of us, myself, Art Lassen, uh, Esteban Granados, wanted to be part of this as well, and then when Tonya said she could make it, uh, there was no question we were going to figure out how to throw the doors open. So come visit Hill Studio, a working studio, and listen to Tony Atisi. Give great voice to these American classics and do a good deed in the process. Help the Boys and Girls Club of Gloucester County, a safe place for kids after school. It's a great contribution. Going to be a fun evening. Uh, plan to be here. We'll be right back. When Hurricane Katrina came through, we lost everything. We lost our business. I trust the Choice Insurance Agent took care of us in the worst possible time in anybody's lives. The good times are rolling again. Had it not been for our Trusted Choice Agent, I promise you we would not be here today. Trusted Choice Independent Insurance Agents offer coverage from a choice of companies and pledge to be there for you when disaster strikes your home or business. Spartan Planning, your local Trusted Choice Agency. Call 423-4561. For everything, there's a season, and a time for everything under heaven. A time for sharing, a time for caring, a time for remembering, and a time for parting. When that time arrives, let Alan C. McBride, Beth McBride Foley, and Thomas D. Foley at the McBride Foley Funeral Home help you in your time of need. Offering a wide variety of funeral services from cremation to traditional, McBride Foley Funeral Home has been helping families with the loss of a loved one with over 50 years of combined service. McBride Foley Funeral Home, 228 West Broad Street, Paulsboro. Thinking about a new appliance or an LCD TV? Don't think twice, think Weiss. Weiss True Value has a full line of LCD TVs plus a great variety of appliances. And of course, hardware items like True Test Paints, Master Mechanic Tools, Electrical Supplies, Key Duplicating, and Rug Doctor Rentals. And for repairs on screens and windows, look no further. Weiss True Value, from making keys to selling appliances and LCD TVs. Don't think twice, think Weiss. 39 West Broad Street, Paulsboro. Well, that's going to do it. Uh, it certainly feels empty not having Irma here for community notes, uh, but she's in Florida for a well-deserved trip, and hopefully the Floridians have received her as she should be received, and she'll be with us next time. So till next time, for Irma Stevenson, who's in Florida, for Fred Buchter behind the camera, for Bill Crane, our producer who couldn't make it, uh, see you on Broad Street next time. <laughs>